Welcome to the video on helicopter dynamics. I am Professor Sri. Uh, if you want to know about engineering and management sub stuff, science and technology stuff, please subscribe to the channel. So welcome to this session. The session is on fundamentals of rotor aerodynamics. So this video contains functions of rotor distribution of velocity during hovering, distribution of velocity during forward flight, vertical rotor wake and flow structure. So a lot of advances in the understanding of helicopter dynamics has led to many gains in helicopter performance compared to even just two decades or three decades ago. So understanding of various aerodynamic problems have been approached using analytical theories, experimentation, numerical modeling, all such kind of things which have worked in conjunction with developments in other disciplines to advance the better understanding of helicopter as a whole. So before coming into helicopter, uh, it was the aircraft that have led that the invention of aircraft have led exponentially which resulted in the better research and uh, manufacturing of helicopter also. So especially the rotor of a helicopter provides three functions. Number one, the generation of a vertical lifting force or thrust in opposition to the helicopter's weight. Second function, the generation of a horizontal propulsive force for forward flight. And the third one, a means of generating forces and moments to control the attitude and position of the helicopter in three-dimensional space. So all the three of these functions must be under the full control of the pilot. Unlike in an aircraft where there is fixed wings, uh, these functions are separated, but the helicopter rotor alone must provide all these three functions. So to meet these kind of roles, which are very demanding, the rotor designer requires considerable knowledge of both the aerodynamic environment in which the rotor operates, as well as how the aerodynamic loading affects the dynamic response of the flapping blades and the overall rotor behavior. Next is distribution of velocity. So the lifting capability of any part of a rotating blade is related to the local angle of attack and local dynamic pressure. The blade position can be defined in terms of an azimuth angle that is psi which is defined as zero when the blade is pointing downstream as you can see in the image so during hovering uh, which is shown in the image that is the velocity variation along the blade is azimuthally axisymmetric and radially linear so with the zero flow of velocity at the rotational axis and the velocity reaches a maximum at the blade tip so uh, the blade tip velocity is uh, denoted as V tip. The local dynamic pressure of any blade element is proportional to the square of the distance from rotational axis. Based on these elementary conditions, uh, considerations for a constant blade angle of attack, the average rotor thrust will depend on the square of rotor tip speed. So here we get the expression the tip speed well, uh, the rotor tip velocity is equal to omega into r and uh, t is directly proportional to uh, the square of rotor tip speed. Also the rotor power p will uh, depend on the cube of the tip speed. So in the forward flight, a component 
so coming back to the hovering the main purpose of the rotor are to provide a vertical lifting force uh, in opposition to the weight of the helicopter and flight control <clears throat> so next is distribution of velocity during forward flight so in forward flight the component of free stream is v infinity adds to or subtract from the rotational velocity at each part of the blade so that is your uh, tip speed now becomes uh, omega r plus v infinity sin psi so as shown in this figure while the distribution of velocity along the blade remains linear it is no longer axisymmetric and varies in magnitude with respect to blade azimuth angle so here it will also be evident that during forward flight speed blade pitch angle and any blade flapping as well as the distribution of induced inflow through the rotor will all affect the blade section angle of attack and that is why the blade lift distribution rotor thrust and rotor power consumption so this non uniformity of angle of attack over the rotor disc is the complication with the helicopter rotor that makes its aerodynamic analysis very very difficult so in forward flight the rotor must also provide a propulsive force to overcome the drag of the helicopter this is obtained by tilting a plane a little of the rotor forward while increasing the overall rotor thrust so that uh, the vertical component of the thrust that is lift remains equal to the aircraft weight the rotor blades encounter an asymmetric velocity field while which is a maximum on the blade that advances into the relative wind and a minimum on the blade that retreats away from the relative wind because uh, there is a lot of articulation in these rotors so because of this articulation built into helicopter blade design the ro uh, results in the rotor blades begin to flap about their hinges causing the rotor disc to tilt a little now vertical rotor wake during hovering uh, the high dynamic pressure found at the tip of the helicopter blade produces a concentration of aerodynamic forces so as a consequence strong vortices form and trail from each blade as you can see in the image that is the white trail circular white trail around the blade tips it is an example of the physical nature of vertical vertical wake generated by a helicopter rotor in hovering flight so here the blade tip vertices are rendered visible by natural condensation of water vapor in uh, the air so these vapor trails are only obtained under conditions when the air atmosphere is close to the dew point it is produced by a small amount of cooling that takes place inside the low pressure vortex course uh, convected downward below the rotor and form a series of interlocking almost like helical trajectories for the most part the net flow velocity at the plane of the rotor and in the rotor wake itself is comprised of the velocities induced by these tip vortices so that is why predicting the strength of uh, uh, predicting the strengths and location of the tip vortices plays a major role or very important role in determining the blade air loads and uh, rotor performances as well as in uh, designing the blades and rotor as a system
So as we have discussed the concentrated uh, aerodynamic forces of the helicopter blade tip which gives the circular trailings. So these trails from blade tip uh, that is uh, vortices. So these uh, trails are formed uh, through the natural condensation of water vapor in the air and uh, it is very important to find out the blade air loads, rotor performances and the design of blades and rotors. So next is the air flow structure or the environment or the atmosphere around the rotating disk. Uh, the overall aerodynamic complexity of uh, these helicopter during forward flight can be seen in this uh, image. The flow field in which the rotor operates is uh, considerably more complex than that of a fixed wind aircraft mainly because of the individual wakes trailed from each blade. Uh, while the fixed wing aircraft, the wing wake and tip vortices trail downstream the aircraft. As far as helicopter during forward flight, the blade tip vortices can remain close to the rotor and to follow blades for several rotor revolution. So as a result of these things, low disc loading and generally low average flow velocity through the rotor disc these vortices remain close enough to produce a strong three-dimensional induced velocity field. At high forward flight speed, the uh, inherently asymmetric nature of the flow over the rotor disc gives rise to a number of uh, problems, especially aerodynamic problems, that uh, ultimately hinders the performance of the rotor. The most obvious uh, is that the blade tip on the advancing side of the rotor disc can start to penetrate into the supercritical and transonic flow regime, regimes with the associated formation of compressibility zones and ultimately a very strong shock waves. There is also occurrence of wave drag and the possibility of shock induced flow separation. Both phenomena require very much much more power to drive the rotor. So this periodic formation of shock waves in an, is another source of uh, very loud and obtrusive noise. Although compressibility effects on contemporary rotors can be relieved to some extent by the use of swept tipped blades and thin transonic airfoils, the problems of the problems are still increased, power requirements and noise are also delayed to moderately higher forward flight speeds and uh, are not limited at all. On uh, retreating side of the disc, that is when the blades are retreating away from the relative wind because of the forward flight velocity of the helicopter, the local velocity and uh, dynamic pressure uh, at the blade are relatively low and the blades are required to operate at a higher angle of attack to maintain the lift. If these values of uh, angle of attack become too low, then the retreating blade will stall uh, this result. This results in the loss of overall lifting and propulsive capability from the rotor and sets an intrinsic barrier to further increase in forward flight speed. So while stall on a fixed wing aircraft occurs at a lower flight speed, a helicopter encounters the problem of stall at a relatively high flight speed. Because of the uh, time dependent nature of the flow environment on the rotor blade during forward flight, retreating blade stall is uh, very highly unsteady and uh, uh, you cannot, there is no proper formula to calculate it. So this unsteady in nature uh, 
so that is why it is referred to as dynamic stall the unsteady air loads produced during dynamic stall are an additional source of vibration on the helicopter which can significantly or badly affect on the forward flight of the helicopter so the things we studied in this uh, video are the functions of rotor mainly there are three functions then the distribution of velocity during hovering what are all the velocity formation at which direction during hovering then similarly distribution of velocity during forward flight then vertical rotor wakes that is the white condensed vapor uh, circular trails formed at the tip of the blade then uh, the flow structure that is your uh, environment or atmosphere surrounding the rotor disc so with this we have concluded with you uh, with the video also comment share and subscribe to the channel thank you